Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be talking about all the rumors of the last two days, rumors and news of the last two days. My take is we just randomly run through it, although there is going to be a piece on Eichel being traded and some things that have happened in that regard. There's going to be a Toronto Maple Leafs uh, injury thing that's pretty interesting, a Vancouver Canucks trade, and much more. Sub yourself up, boys and girls. Sub yourself up and be part of the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show frolic. Five days a week, weekdays, from 3 to 5 Eastern, you can be part of it. Uh, and uh, just sub yourself up, and it's a lot of fun. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Also, if you like four major sports and all this, and all the and content of those four major sports from all the teams in the leagues, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Hernandez and Melissa, yes, you got yourself the sacks of pearls of wisdom necklaces there. Yo, oh my gosh, that's a big sack. Yeah, you go take that off there. They're heading out right now. So get yourself subbed up. And we are going to look at all the news of the days. First one. Bar Brule, uh picked up by the uh, Seattle Kraken. I think this is a fantastic pickup by them. Tampa Bay is still so deep that they got to let guys like Bar Brule go. You guys might not know who he is. I watch a divorce-worthy amount of hockey. And uh, every time I watch Tampa Bay Lightning, I was like, who the heck? This guy's great. Um, not going to put huge offense up, but he's such a cool energy guy. He can play up and down your lineup. Nice pickup by Seattle. Uh, Brooks by Montreal, probably just trying to tick off Toronto, picked him up. And Brown claimed off of waivers by Philadelphia, who is – Kind of an up and down guy that can that can play if he has to, but he's probably never going to be too much a depth pickup for sure. This is the big one though for early today, anyways. Ilya Mikhaev out eight weeks with a broken thumb, two months with a broken thumb. He must have really broke her. He must have did her good for out two months. And can any team afford less to have things like this happen than the Toronto Maple Leafs? who are on kind of a skeleton crew as it is, uh, picked up like basically off the top of the scrap heap the best players they could find, and now they're losing Mikhaev. The good news is Michael Bunting is going to get a chance in that top six, which I always wanted to see. Um, and the bad news is uh, Michael Amadeo, who when he played in uh, L.A., never looked like he was an NHLer is going to be on the fourth line now with Spezza and Wayne Simmons, who I think isn't very good either um, for what he can provide. But it hurts. It hurts a lot. What do you think, Toronto fans? Does this hurt you in your insides? Because it would if it was me if I was a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. One thing I do want to notice here, though, is that Timothy Lilligren looks like he might make the roster. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. He really needed to come a long way to be able to make – this team. So I don't know if it's because of their lack of depth as much as Lila Grin has really improved a lot, but should be interesting to see. Next, we go to 39 players clear, clear waivers. And the one I wanted to look at here was um, Malcolm Subban never get picked. Jacob Larson not getting picked up from Anaheim. Uh, what happened? I'm asking you, Anaheim Ducks fans, what happened to Jacob Larson that he didn't make it this year? Uh, injury problems, out of shape, something. This kid, this is not something Anaheim can afford for a guy like Jacob Larson, who's only, what, 23 years old and is supposed to be picking up a top four by now in their team, getting waived? Tell me, Anaheim fans, what's that all about? I seriously don't know, and I'm very surprised. Uh, Mark Giordano, named captain of the Seattle Kraken. Uh, I'll combine this one with the fact that Barboule picked up by the Seattle Kraken. Uh, if For Seattle fans, if, I, if you're just watching this part, I really think that it was a nice pickup of Barboule. And if you watch, go a little bit before, you'll see. Uh, if you go back a little bit in the video, you'll see my take on that. But 
Mark Giordano, named captain of Seattle Kraken, tells me that he's signing. He's re-signing with this team. I find it very interesting that uh, he will re-sign here. Um, it's great for his team. Great for him, I guess. It's close to Calgary in Seattle, like close-ish. So it's probably a great spot from a family perspective and all that kind of stuff like that. I kind of thought he was going to be used as trade bait, but doesn't look like it. I know one thing. If you want to build a team around a character, around characters, Giordano is a great person to use in that vein. So, uh, and Jordan Eberle, Yanni Gord, Adam Larson, and, J- and Jaden Shorts all named assistants as well. I actually thought it was going to be Jaden Schwartz that got capped in here, but nice pick. I think that's a really good uh, pick as well. He was a captain already in Calgary, so he gets to set the tone for what the Seattle Kraken are going to be, and I think he'll do a good job of that. Uh, Arizona Coyotes expected to sign Anson Thornton. Uh, This is kind of a story simply because this kid is a walk-on uh, nobody expected him to make it, and now he's making it, and he's he's just basically been disrespected his whole career, and it's good to see. It's a feel-good story. Um, Bobby Ryan released from his PTO in, by the Detroit Red Wings. Hope somebody picks him up. I hope this isn't the end of his career because it would be kind of a sad way to go out, you know. Uh, but in a lot of ways, it's a good way to go out because he managed to uh, take it upon himself to become better in his regular life and go get some help for his addictions and all that. And he gave it the best shot he could. So in that way, I guess it would be really good. Um, another guy here was Kratzoff, Vitaly Kratzoff. That was a surprise. I think everybody expected him to make it for the Rangers, but His offense hasn't really progressed all that well. He looks really good in a lot of ways, but I make sense for him to go to the AHL and build his offensive confidence up. So it'll be interesting to see what he turns out into in uh, in Arizona. There, Pittsburgh Penguins to sign Brian Boyle, and to me, this is really a sign that. The depth in the organization has taken a huge hit with Crosby and Malkin being injured. And just overall, um, Brian Boyle is barely an NHLer. Um, Tampa Bay, Lightning, extend John Cooper. And what else were you going to do? The guy, was, you, know, you just won two cups. Honestly, I think John Cooper doesn't get enough credit for how good of a coach he is because of how good of a team he is. If you look at his systems and the way he has progressed as a as a coach, he used to be like this really laid back guy. Now you see him having a fiery side to him. Um, there's layers of Cooper that you see while he's coaching on the ice, and when you hear people talk about him as a teacher and a coach, they hear it's like nothing. They're like it's like nothing. It's not nothing. Very few coaches get spoken about by players that used to play for Cooper, like Cooper does. Like it is amazing what they say he that he has done for his career. So easy for him to do that. Gustafson signs with Chicago. That don't matter. Let's look at some of the earlier stuff here. Florida Panthers acquire Oliu Levy from the Vancouver Canucks, and they gave up Yuho Lamico. And Noah Juleson in that deal. Um, now, I've heard a lot. Okay, I'm, I, I, I admit I, I make fun of Benning quite a bit as well myself. But I've heard a lot of slamming of Benning for taking uh, Ulevi in the draft that he was selected. They could have taken Sergachev in that draft and many other good players as well. Um, but the fact is... Ulevi had two very freak accidents, uh, injuries that really he could do nothing about. And in this situation, he gets an opportunity to go on a fresh start and maybe try to be able to accomplish something in Florida. Honestly, little diff- it's a little. It's hard for me to believe he's going to make it on any team when you are seeing Vancouver taking guys like Lucien and Jack Rathbone 
over him. Um, Luke Shen hasn't been has barely been able to make like three or four different teams he's been on. And uh, honestly, you levy at this point should be way better than that. So I think actually it wasn't a bad pickup of Yuha Lamako. They needed some size up front. I think he can take Justin Dowling's spot on that fourth line. They needed some size on that fourth line that can play hard. Um, and I think he's the guy. I love him. If you watch him play, you can't help but like Lamico. Now, as far as uh, Noah Juleson is concerned, sort of like Ulevi, he's had the injury problem. So they're switching injury problem for injury problem. Sometimes when you get a fresh uh, t- a player gets a fresh start somewhere, they feel less defeated. I don't know. It lifts them up and makes them feel like they can do it. Um, the problem is with you with uh, the problem with um, what's his name? I just have forgot it already. With Juleson is that this is his third team. He went from Montreal to Florida and now to Vancouver. I don't know if he's ever going to play, but kind of making the best out of a bad situation. I actually don't mind this move for Benning. It just, it, it appears he definitely wasn't going to make it in Vancouver. So um, next we go to the New Jersey devil sign, Jimmy VC. Hope he gets, gets another shot. Guy just keeps on getting shots. Uh, I never really thought, I didn't really, I haven't really thought he's been that great anywhere he's gone after his one good year in New, in New York, but he keeps on getting shots, which shows you he's got the talent. There's just things missing from his game, and they're hoping to put it all together. Um, camp, some camp cuts. Uh, Ryan Suzuki cut again. Joey Keane, this might be the end for Keane. Another cut, but this is the big one. In Chicago, Alexander Nylander, who they traded to... Uh, got from Buffalo in a trade. He was one of the guys actually in that same draft with you Levy that was selected by Buffalo instead of Sergachev and has just been a disaster. It just, I don't know, attitude issue. I remember when he left Buffalo, he, he acted like a snot no kid, kid. There was a lot of uh, vitriol coming out of his mouth about Buffalo. And it, at his age, it just wasn't right to see that happen. That was crazy that he, uh, he and now he's getting um, sent to the minors already again. Terrible to see for him. Now, finally, we'll get into not finally. There's two more pieces here. New York Rangers extend Mika Zibanejad at $8.5 million a year for until 2029 30. Uh, it has a no movement clause up until the seventh year, apparently, and uh, in which case it goes to a 21-team no-trade clause. And I've been listening to Rangers fans say that this has been a couple that have said it's too much, he's going to be too old. I understand this. It's always a risk when you give good players money. No matter, There's no way to do it where it's got, not going to be a risk. I, I heard some guy, one of the guys in the Rangers uh, chat rooms I'm in, and a couple people actually say, why not at $6.5 million? Well, because I'm not signing it if I'm, if I'm Zabonijad at $6.5 million. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent this year. Honestly, if, the, if, if Zabonijad decided to go in the open market, he would have got probably almost like what Barkov got. And you can say, well, he doesn't deserve that. There are teams out there that desperately need a number one center. Desperately. The Columbus Blue Jackets comes to mind. Um, the Boston Bruins could use a second line center, but that's probably where they wouldn't pay that much. But a team like the Columbus Blue Jackets, maybe the Detroit Red Wings think they're ready to get it going. I could see them giving them nine, nine and a half, ten, getting in a bidding war and he gets up there and he signed for eight and a half here. Is it going to be difficult maybe when he's 37 years old? Maybe. But the cap should be going up by then. By that time, eight and a half might not even be bad, not bad for his production as long as he holds up. So I think it's a good deal. I think there's nothing wrong with it at all. 
um, again, it brings up in the article here that um, Adam Fox and Kapokako and Vitaly Kratsov and these guys are going to need some contracts. I, I'm pretty sure Alexander Gorgiev is going to be traded. Uh, going to need some contracts as well. All that set aside, you have to work out those things when they come. And I'm sure you've got cap people that are going to be able to either give bridge contracts or whatever they got to do. Z is a difficult, it's hard to find a number one center in the NHL. Like I said, there's lots of teams that would love a Z. And he, his price tag would be huge if he decided to go to free agency. So I like the deal. I see nothing wrong with it. Uh, Ovechkin day-to-day -day with a lower body doesn't mean much to me. But now we go to the Ducks and Flames leading candidates to acquire Jack Eichel right now. Um, TSN's Darren Drager brings this up. It brings it up that uh, they, they've been pushed by new agent Pat Bryson, that the medical files come out, and apparently they have come out. And it appears that through these sources, these insiders, LeBron and uh, Drager, that the leading candidates are the Flames and Anaheim. Now, if you've been watching me, I've been predicting where that Eichel may go in a lot of my videos. And the Ducks and Anaheim were almost at the top of the list. I actually liked LA, but I thought Anaheim made a lot of sense because they need a big name to sell tickets there. And their rebuild is sputtering. So they need to find a way to get interest now. Uh, so I, I thought I'd go upon myself and look at some deals that might happen for Anaheim and Calgary if this were to happen. I know Calgary fans have heard this over and over and over again, but this is probably the first time it has come apart, it's come out that they're actually a leader in it. Now, Calgary as well. well let's go to Anaheim first. Anaheim, what would Anaheim give up for a Jack Eichel? Um, I believe... First of all, they're gonna. The uh, I believe they're gonna want a player off the roster now. That player I think they'll be going for is Maxim Comtois, and the reason why is Maxime Comtois is from Quebec, which is really close to Buffalo, and that proximity may endear him to want to stick around in Buffalo. Plus, it's gonna give him a really good opportunity to be a number uh, to be a top line player. Um, not that Anaheim isn't as well, but um, with if he were to go to another place, he may not be too happy if he was stuck down lower in the lineup. So guys like that are important to Buffalo. They want guys that want to be there. Um, now, a lot of people are going to say Trevor Zegers. I'm almost positive Anaheim is going to avoid the Trevor Zegers thing as much as they possibly can, and I think they can avoid it. I think they can get away with Isaac Lundstrom, Maxim Comtois, possibly Hampus Lindholm. And why do I say Lindholm? Because he's a Swede and he can help Darlene. I think he would be great for Darlene. And a first round pick. That might be too much. You might be able to take Isaac Lundstrom out of there. You might be able to move things around here. It depends how much Calgary is desperate. And I think Calgary is very desperate. This is a team that is on a borderline of either being a contender or being a complete rebuild. And I don't think they want to go that way. That's why they're in the talks here. So you may take that much to get him. That's assuming you're going to be happy with the results of his neck injury, which I'm hearing from a lot of doctors that they talk to that he'll be fine when he comes back from that injury. So, like, really good. And if you believe that, I might I might have to make that deal. You've got Comtois, Lund Lunderstrom. I like him as a good two-way guy, but he's never going to be an overly offensive player. Hampus Lindholm is hard to swallow, hard to give up. But you've got Jacob Larson there, although he was sent down this year. And... You're not really in win-now mode, but you are in got-to-find-a-player-to-build-around mode. Then the first-round pick. Now, the first-round pick, what I would do with that first-round pick is it would be it's where it would be protected 
depending on how much Eichel plays. So it could be a top 10 protected. It could be a top three protected. It could be a lottery pick to to protected. Whatever it, it depends on how good Eichel does and what the team does with Anaheim. See what I mean? The better they do, the better the protection of the pick. What do you think of that, Anaheim Ducks fans? Now let's go to Calgary. Same sort of thing. Uh, I think any deal for uh, Eichel is going to be dependent orientated deal, depending on what happens, how good he does, how well the team does with him, all of those sort of things like that because of the injury. So um, the first thing that would probably be involved is Sean Monaghan. However, Calgary fans, he's not going to have much value. Yeah, you're really just doing this more or less to make the it all work. Um, going over to Buffalo, he could t- – they got Tage Thompson there. He'll fill in a spot until Cousins is ready, probably. And you never know. He might knock it out of the park in Buffalo. He gets out of that environment, and he's able to do well in Buffalo. But the other problem is, of course, he's got a deal that he's got to sign next year. He's going to be a free agent after 2023. So they could only have him for two years. So that also takes down his value. But I do think he could very well be part of the deal. There's talks of Johnny Goudreau being part of that deal. That would be the case. I, I don't think they want that to be the case. I think they want to play there. They want to sign Johnny Goudreau and they want to find a center for Johnny Goudreau, which would be the smart move. Uh, and I don't think Buffalo would be too excited about getting him anyways because he's going to be a free agent. And if I'm Goudreau, am I going to sign with Buffalo? Probably not. So it would be like Monaghan, Dylan Dubé, or Andrew Mangiopani. I would prefer Andrew. I'd be going after hard after Andrew Mangiopani. I know Calgary fans won't like that. Um, but you got to give up. You got to give up people to get him. Uh, Yuso Valamaki. I think would be part of this deal. Um, I think they would try hard for Rasmus Anderson, but probably not get away with it. It would probably be Yusuf Valamaki and then picks dependent on how good Eichel does and how does the team do with them. Could be as much as an unprotected first or and a second, or it could be as much as a protected first, top 10 protected, top three protected, and other picks as well. The picks are going to be what is the dependent on Eichel. It's going to be it's going to alleviate the risk a little bit. So, from what I just said, if those teams are offering those sort of packages, who would I take? I would go with Anaheim on this one. But um, maybe you Calgary fans will have something else you'd like to offer. Tell me. Uh, as well. And Anaheim fans, maybe you would be interested in telling me in the comment section who you would offer. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. I hope you enjoyed the fine programming. I'm going to be doing content like this over and over again. So sub yourself up. Enjoy the excitement. Not to mention the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. You got to check that out. It is so much fun. An interactive show for everybody um, that you can be part of if you just sub yourself up and enjoy it with us, because I'd love to have you. That's my full 42K. Bye.